Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Using Alter, an Evidence-Based Approach to Improving Parents' Home Safety Practices. Today's webinar is facilitated by Luke Jr., part of the Fall Prevention Community of Practice. My name is Michelle Dukeman, and I'm the Knowledge Translation Coordinator for the Fall Prevention Program at Parachute. Before we begin, we'd like to start today's presentation uh, with a land acknowledgement. Today, we respectfully acknowledge the land on which we live and work as the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Indigenous people, Canada's First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people, whose presence reaches back to ancestral time. We respect and affirm the inherent rights and title of Indigenous people of Canada and declare our respect of Indigenous elders, past, present, and future. I would ask that everyone take a moment to themselves to acknowledge the land where they currently reside. I'm going to go over a few housekeeping items next, but uh, while I do that, we'd love to see who is joining us today. So if you can, please let us know your role, organization, and uh, where you're joining us from, your location. Um, that uh, will give us a good sense of who is joining. So you can share that information in the chat. And like I said, I'll just go over a few housekeeping items in the meantime. All participants, um, are currently muted. Um, so if you have questions generally, um, perhaps about the technology um, or about Loop Junior, uh, please type those into the chat box. Marguerite, my colleague, will be monitoring this space. Um, if you have questions for our presenter, Barb, please submit those through the Q&A box that appears at the bottom of the Zoom window. Questions for Barb will be answered at the end of the webinar, uh, and you'll only be able to view questions you have asked, not questions posed by other participants. This webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be sent to all participants in a few days along with the link to the presentation slides. So keep that in mind. And many of you on the line uh, may already be Loop Junior members, um, but for those of you who are not, we encourage you to sign up. Loop Junior is the no cost online communication platform for the fall prevention community of practice. Um, and it brings together members from across Canada to problem solve and discuss how to implement evidence informed and promising practices in fall prevention and children's safety. Um, listed on the slide here are just a few of the services Loop Junior provides. And as a reminder, as always, the link rec uh, recording link and presentation slides will be posted to Loop Junior in a few days. I'd like now to introduce our presenter, um, Dr. Barbara Morangello. She is a professor in the psychology department at the University of Guelph. She holds a Canada Research Chair in Child Youth Injury Prevention and has a long history of research aimed at identifying effective ways to reduce children's injury risk behaviors and to promote parents' home safety practices. She has published over 200 articles, has fellow status in the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences and the Royal Society of Canada, and is an Order of Ontario inductee. You can find a complete bio for Barbara on Loop Jr., um, but without further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Barb, and you can now share your screen. Okay, great. I think we're I think we're on. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to be here and to tell you um, about Alter, um, which is all about injury prevention for young children in the home. Um, it is an evidence based approach, and uh, I emphasize that because um, so much of what we have done historically has not been evidence based. So I'm really happy to share um, this particular program with you. Um, the program. There we go. Oh, there we go. Uh, the program focuses on unintentional injuries. It's for children one through through five years of age. Um, it addresses home injuries, including falls and poisoning, choking, drowning, and burns. Um, and it really is targeting caregivers' behaviors related to child safety. Um, so that's sort of the scope. 
of the research that we did in our efforts to develop this program. Um, most parent-directed um, child safety programs historically have targeted environmental modifications, um, which there's tremendous merit. That's got to be part of part of you know what what we're um, encouraging. But we also know by the time children are one to two years, they're really mobile. Um, parents start to realize they can't eliminate all hazards because children are curious, they do unpredictable things, and they're notoriously um, good at creating hazards out of non-hazardous things. Um, and so we need more than just an environmental um, modification approach. Um, we want parents to implement a broader range of safety strategies and especially supervision. And by supervision, I'm talking about both um, attention to the child, visual, auditory, and proximity. Um, and ALTER is basically a tool um, that helps them to do that, to reduce um, risks of injuries for young children and do a little bit more than just environmental modifications. Um, for those of you who don't know what ALTER stands for, the mystery ALTER mnemonic, um, it is a mnemonic and it's basically um, a tool that we have used to help parents think of ways they could do modifications in the moment to reduce their child's risk of getting injured. So A stands for the activity of the parent or the child could be changed. Um, L is location, either where the parent is or where the child is could be changed. T is the timing of the parent's task and what they want to get done. Maybe now is not the best time, depending on the scope of what you want to do. Um, e is your environmental modification. Um, so, you know, we are still encouraging attaching bookcases to the to the wall, using stair gates, et cetera. And R is resources and resources are very broadly defined by us. So they might be um, using your partner to help um, look after the child while you're doing you know, a heavy duty chore. They might be using online resources, going to parachute website, um, et cetera. So ALTER is um, the mnemonic, it stands for a variety of approaches and things a parent might do. Um, and now I'll now that everyone knows at least what ALTER means, as I use the term, um, I, I will continue then with, with other parts of the, um, what I want to share with you. So there's a few unique features of ALTER as an approach to home safety. Um, the first is we don't advise parents on what to do. Um, we give them the tools so they can problem solve. Um, group delivery is particularly good um, for ALTER because parents share ideas and they're really, they, they're wonderfully creative. They're, um, they're really learning from each other far more than, than from me. <laughs> um, and so just keep in mind group sharing um, is a wonderful opportunity for parents to really learn from other parents. Um, we accept that the parent is the expert on their child. So, you know, what the child is likely to do is probably going to vary across families, across children, even within a family. Um, and so parents, you know, see that as a barrier if I'm telling them, you really should be doing this, this, and this. And they're thinking, yeah, but my child, like, is never, ever, ever shown an interest in any of that. It's more important I do that, that, and that. Um, you know, we really acknowledge they are the expert on their child and we're giving them ideas. Um, we accept that they may have values other than safety. Um, so as you might imagine, for a child two to three years, wanting the child to be independent, not wanting to raise the child in a bubble. I mean, these are legitimate values that parents have that they have to balance with their value of wanting to keep their child safe. Um, so ALTER is really, it, it lets them have some freedom of being able to reduce risks of injury while at the same time, maybe really advocating for independence in some ways as well. Um, one of the things to keep in mind, too, is that, um, you know, ALTER really allows um, you to, you know, tailor um, the program to meet the parents' needs. So because we're leaving it up to them, um, we're, we give them the mnemonic, we give them ideas, they share ideas, um, and then ultimately they go home and, and implement what they think is going to work for their child in their home situation and based on their own values and what they want to achieve. Um, and we do know from research that any kind of tailoring um, promotes success in interventions with parents. Um, it makes them feel like you get me um, and you're listening. And, and that is really 
you know, parts of tailoring that go a long way towards promoting their listening and wanting to make some changes um, and share what, you know, what you have to offer. Um, note also that we don't ever talk about supervision. Um, we actually um, have shown that the supervision uh, effects occur uh, almost through osmosis. So we don't actually talk about we want you to supervise more closely. By implementing ALTER, they effectively wind up supervising more closely. Um, so it's more of a backdoor approach to promoting supervision. Um, and we have found that that is really, really um, effective rather than trying to talk with parents about supervising more closely. Um, what are some things that parents really like about ALTER? Um, we're not asking them to supervise better or more. We don't use the S word. So we're not blaming, we're not shaming. You should, you could, maybe you need to. We don't use any of those kinds of terms. Um, it acknowledges right up front, you can't watch your child all the time. That's not a reasonable expectation. That's not what we're advocating. There's lots of ways you can reduce risk to your child um, other than you know putting them in a bubble, right? Which we don't want to do. Um, the mnemonic is very easy to remember. It's really easy to implement. Um, it gives them lots of options, which they really like. Um, and in fact, parents have told us they use it with older children as well. Although the program was developed with younger ones in mind, um, in, in some of our studies, parents have said it works great for even like elementary school children. Um, so the other thing is that the more you do it, the faster, the more automatic it is. Um, so initially, you know, it might seem like, what, you know, I have to do a lot of thinking. Actually, not really. Um, lots of things just intuitively come to parents, and they have told us that once they start doing it, it's just naturally just comes faster and easier, which is great. Um, Alter is evidence-based from start to finish. Um, the research we did with parents um, helped guide how we developed the program what they would support, what they would use. Um, we did lots of process um, focus group work. We did lots of outcome evaluations to confirm not just with parents, but with you know frontline workers delivering the program. It's easy to do, it's very adaptable. You can use bits and pieces, um, et cetera. Um, and we have shown in our randomized control trials that it actually improves supervision and the effects last at least a year later, which is as long as we've been able to go uh, before our funding ran out. Um, there's lots of references on the ALTER website, um, alterforchildsafety.ca, and there's lots of specific research references if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about that aspect of the foundation of the program. Um, ALTER is basically the key tool in the supervising for home safety program. So if some of you have written to me and said, is this a separate thing? No, the supervising for home safety program was sort of the big name <laughs> that we submitted when we got our grants and all of that. Um, and the, the core of that is ALTER, which I will run through today um, about how you would deliver this whole program. Um, the Supervising for Home Safety program ultimately wound up being a video-based program. Um, so that's really the modality um, that we chose to, to use, um, based again on all the research of what parents told us. Um, it targets key psychological factors related to injury appraisals. Um, and ultimately the trickle down effect is it improves supervision without us actually using the S word as we're talking to parents. Um, why did we decide to use videos? Um, first off, most importantly, it was the preferred format for parents. Um, videos they can listen to while they're doing other things, they can do it on their phone, it, you know, very adaptable. Um, from my point of view as a psychologist, um, videos have this tremendous capacity for me to provide content, but also emotional tone. So it's not just about what gets said in the video, it's how things get said. Um, and we showed in our research that that additional component of the emotion um, targeting the emotions really enhances the impact. And parents were very clear with us about this. Um, there's two modalities of input as well on the videos. And what I mean by that is um, visually on the screen, whatever is being said is printed. 
So some people are visual learners. They really need to see the words to process it. And others are more auditory learners um, and they need to hear it. <laughs> and so the way we've constructed the videos, both of those modalities, there's a duplication. So some, sometimes people say, well, why don't you have different you know, words if you're saying what you're saying? It's like, actually, no, this was based on research from the education psychology literature about how people learn best. Um, and we really try to create the opportunity for them to learn best however they do. Um, so there's both a visual and an auditory um, component to the videos. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about um, how the program gets delivered. So phase one, and apologies if you can't quite see that, but phase one, the presentation is of the Watchful Parents Safe Children video. This is a 20 minute video. So it's not like racing through. Um, it has very specific rules. And the goal of the video is to create readiness for behavior change and a commitment to doing just a little more than whatever they're currently doing. Um, the Watchful Parent Safe Children video, it shows um, very specific content. So it covers different injury risks. It covers burns and falls and drowning and poisoning and choking. Um, and these are discrete sections throughout um, this video. Um, it cites Canadian statistics. So this is like, you know, real for parents. This is, this is um, significant and real. Um, it talks about may, the main hazards for these types of injuries. Um, so for example, you know, the children's skin burns four times faster than an adult skin. So they really need, you know, sunscreen for burn protection, you know, things like that. We try and talk about uh, common hazards that parents can relate to. Um, we talk about injury consequences, not just in the short term, there's an injury, but in the long term. So the idea that, you know, yeah, a little head bump, maybe not a big deal, but after six, maybe head bumps, maybe there are some longer term effects um, of that kind of brain injury on memory on learning capacity, et cetera. So we did a fair amount of searching literature to try and find some longer term outcomes that we could talk to uh, parents about as well. Um, we also have injury stories told by parents. Um, they're very hard hitting. Um, they're based on um, real events. Um, these are not real parents, but they're based on real events. Um, and the stories are very, very impactful. Um, they sort of take all the content and bring it into a, oh my goodness, this could be me, this could be my child. Um, and then we encourage the parent to take action. Um, so ultimately, that's where we want to get to the readiness for behavior change, right? Um, the affect in the video, if you were just to focus on like the emotional pull, if you will, um, it moves from fear, like, oh, injuries happen, um, to hope. They're, they're preventable to, yes, I can. Um, there are things I can do. What can I do more of? That kind of idea. The specific psychological factors um, are outlined here. So for fear, we're talking about perceptions of vulnerability. Children get injured. A lot of them get injured. Um, they get seriously injured, some of them. And there can be long-term impact of some of these injuries, whether it's a traumatic burn, um, whether it's a concussion on a developing brain, et cetera. Um, then we go to hope. You know, a lot of these are preventable events. Um, it requires just doing some things a little differently. Um, that kind of idea of, yes, I can, self-efficacy. I can actually take some steps. What can I do? Ah, alter, here's my ideas. Um, so it was very, it was crafted, <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, after the video, we follow up with a discussion of the video. Um, and in particular, we want to, we ask them about what were some key messages that came through for you in that video. Um, so, you know, they might say, oh, I didn't realize that these were so significant. I mean, I thought all kids get hurt, but I never realized how severe it could be, um, how long term the effects could be. Um, we asked them, did you learn anything you didn't know or anything that surprised you? Um, there's always something in there that surprised parents. So we try and ask questions that we know they're going to have answers to. We know they're going to have opinions to. There's no right or wrong here. It's literally just asking them in the moment, what surprised you? Did you learn anything different? What came through for you as a message? 
Um, and then we move to trying to bring it down to them and their child and that, you know, interpersonal relevance, like, oh yeah, that could be me. That could be my child, right? So have you had any close calls with your child? Um, maybe they didn't get hurt, but maybe something unexpected happened, right? They like, oh, I didn't know they can even open medicine. Um, you know, so we're asking them to reflect on those kinds of events, um, which brings it down to be real for them. The goal is to have parents identify with the parents in the video. So we have the parents in the video saying things that we have all said as parents. I'll be back in a minute. I'll just be a splash. You know, just don't touch that. You know, I'll be right back. So there's lots of commentary throughout by parents saying things that we have all said. Right. And that's the goal to get them to be ready to realize that could be me. I've said that. Right. I can hear myself in that or I can see my child doing that. Um, there's something just to be aware of. I have it as a note. Um, the video can be hard hitting. We are not soft pedaling anything here. Injuries are horrific events. They can be. Um, so there's graphic images of injuries to children, burns, uh, near drownings. Like this is this is all based on research though. Um, what the parents told us basically this was this, I don't like seeing it, but I remembered those images. And that motivated me when I was at home and about to leave my child alone with something on the stove or in the, in the bathtub with their brother. Um, so the goal isn't to you know, evoke fear or traumatize, right? The goal is to um, really help them to appreciate um, that injuries are quite, um, they're not typical child events. They don't have to be, right? Um, I mean, little bumps maybe, but you don't know it's going to be a big, a little bump or a big bump, right? You don't know how their brain is going to tolerate it. So we want them to just start thinking a little differently about the preventability of injuries, right? Um, for those of you who look at the video and think, oh, that would be too much for my families or whatever, we have created a PowerPoint version. It's on the Alter website. The PowerPoint covers all of the same information but the emotionality is gone because there's no audio on the PowerPoint. It's just visual content. The injury stories are still there, but it's sort of up to you to go through the PowerPoint, read it with your families. Um, you know, so you you get to decide between those two um, those two choices, right? PowerPoint or the video. Um, I encourage the video. Uh, because there's a whole point to it about readiness for change that you may or may not get to with a PowerPoint, which is much more cognitive and uh, and in their head, uh, whereas the video allows for some emotional content as well to come into play. Uh, phase two is um, after the video discussion about the messages, et cetera, um, we have them think about three barriers for keeping their child safe at home um, or three challenges or, you know, however you want to phrase it. Um, the idea is to get them to reflect on, you know, for me, what are some things that are just make it really difficult, right? Like, so for example, they might say, I rent my home and I can't be putting stair gates into the walls. Um, so like, that's hard for me. Like, I know stair gates are the best, but I can't really do that. Okay, then that's a barrier we'll talk about. Um, and it doesn't have to be three. It might be one each in your group or whatever. But the idea is to get them to start reflecting on what are the things that's making it hard for them to keep their children safe in the home. Uh, and it might be about the environment. It might be about they have three children. There's not much going on. So you work with whatever they're giving you. We introduce alter at this time. So often we have a little handout, we make little like template magnets, you know, put a cheapy little magnet on the back and they could take it home. They have it in their hand. They can look at it as you're talking about alter. So we're not stressing their memory of the auditory, right? So again, we're trying to do auditory as we talk about it in a visual in their hand as they can look at it, might, might need that. Um, we ask them in collaboration, then let's pick one of these barriers. So three of you mentioned um, this. So let's use Alter and see how we might address that barrier. What are, what are your ideas? What are some activities? What you could do differently, what your child could do differently? And we go through Alter in a real problem solving way. Um, and they have the magnet and we ask them you know, to take that home, put it on your fridge, might give you some ideas throughout the week or before we meet again. Um, we go through, like, again, this would be on their handout how to do an activity, a location, a timing, the environment, and resources, as I've said before. We review it, we practice it with the parent. Um, here's an example. 
Um, so sometimes we'll have an example that we might actually give them, right? Depending on their language skills, how um, how many times you've met before, you know, do they really feel like you get them? Are they more reticent group? They're not likely to talk. We might have, you know, on the back of our like altar magnet. Um, on the back, we might even have, you know, something like this. Here's an example so you can remember how to do it. You want to clean the fridge. Okay, so how could you use alter to come up with some ideas on how to do that and keep your child safe? A, change your activity or that of your child. Maybe have your child help. So every time you take out a red container, let's count them, see how many red ones we have, how many green ones we have, something like that. We might change the location. Um, obviously, you're not changing the location of the fridge. In this case, you might change the location of your child. Bring some toys into the kitchen, uh, coloring, um, et cetera. So while you're doing it, they're near you, proximity, attention, right? We might change the timing. Cleaning, cleaning the fridge in my house is a big deal. <laughs> it takes quite a while. So I might do this when the child naps, okay? So timing is something I want them to start thinking about. Um, and, and change the environment. So maybe I might rearrange the kitchen chairs so they can't leave the kitchen. So they can't go running off and then I'm stuck, you know, with everything on the counter, et cetera, right? So, you know, I might arrange the kitchen uh, chairs in a way so they stay out of my way so I'm not tripping over them as I'm going back and forth, right? To the empty stuff on the fridge. Or I might use my resources and say, this is a big job. Um, I want to really focus when I'm doing it. So I think I'm going to ask Mary, my friend, if she can take my child on Thursday afternoon, and then next Thursday, I'll take her child, um, and she can have a break or, or do whatever big job she needs to do, right? So we're just, again, give examples, go through it, involve them in problem solving. Um, after parents understand what ALTER is, and then we discuss when do you use ALTER. So anytime. Anytime you're thinking you're leaving your child alone, they might be out of view, you're going to be busy with something, you know, just any time at all. And we also ask them, a lot of the parents who um, wound up in a merge with a child, you know, first time injury kind of thing, a lot of them reported to us that they sort of knew there was this little faint feeling of worry, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't leave him right now, like, and they ignored it. Um, and so we talk about that in session. We say, you know, sometimes a lot of us have had these little inklings of feelings of like, oh, I probably shouldn't, but I really want to, but no, I shouldn't. You know, we're asking you to listen to that. Use alter before you decide you're going to leave that child alone, even for an instant, right? Um, why do you use alter? Uh, we talk about their goals, right? Every parent wants to keep their child safe. Nobody wants it an injury to occur, especially a traumatic one, right? Um, but we also acknowledge they have many other goals, right? They are busy, parents are busy people. They wanna be able to go to the bathroom. They wanna be able to do some chores. They might have other responsibilities. They might need respite. They have a terrible headache. Um, so we really listen to you know the whole person, not just the parent safety piece. Um, and we also tell them right up front, like no parent can watch their child all the time. But every parent wants to keep them safe, right? So all there is just a way to help you. Maybe there's something in there that can achieve both of those goals for you, right? Keep your child safe and do something other thing other than just keeping them in view right next to them on the couch, right? Because you have other things to do. So we're really trying in this discussion um, to, you know, to meet them where they are genuinely. Um, oh, wait one second. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Um, alter the phase three part is the practice, practice, practice. Um, and that's where we get to use our video vignettes. Um, we have a whole library of video vignettes available on the website and they're organized in a variety of different ways to try and make it easy for whatever you might be searching for. So there's a type of injury listing if you wanna go by type of injury. There's a listing based on the child age and the sex of the child shown. Um, diversity is represented or not, um, a sibling is present or not, um, it's mom or a dad as the parent in the video vignette. So there's lots of, you know, ways we try to make it, you know, um, useful 
for anyone who, who might want to use video vignettes and have special things they're looking for. Um, there's also um, in the listings, um, we try and identify potential barriers to parents using Walter um, and address that in some of the vignettes. So the one of the most common barriers is, you know, but at this age, I really want to promote independence. Like I need my child to be able to do more than they're doing right now. With my help, I want more of that on their own. And it's like, okay, but that doesn't have to be at the cost of safety. That's not meaning that, you know, you can't use Alter. You're just going to use it in a slightly different way. And so some of the videos talk about that. Uh, tips on showing the vignettes, and we are um, going to show a few so you can sort of experience what, um, you know, what I would typically do. Um, during each vignette, there are questions that are posed. Um, so, you know, the child might be climbing on the table. Right, and the, the video pauses, the question comes up on the screen. Why is the child doing that? Even though the parent said not to do that, right? And the goal is to stop the vignette and have that discussion. Some of the parents in your groups will be right on it. You know, of course, children are unpredictable, they're curious, well, other parents won't. So the whole point of the group discussion is no one is left behind, right? If somebody knows something, they share it. If somebody didn't know something, now they do, right? Um, so we stop and discuss these. Um, it's not a free-for-all. You have to know in your mind where you want to get to. So you can sort of lead the group to this with their key points, with your summary, right? Um, so, you know, the idea is that children don't follow rules because they're curious. Uh, they want to explore. This is to be expected. Um, and can you think of a time maybe that this happened, you know, where you thought your child was for sure going to follow that rule and lo and behold, there they were, you know, climbing on the chair. So we're trying to get them again, just to say, that's me. That's my child. Nothing wrong. It's typical. It's age appropriate. But boy, does it make it hard to keep them safe. Right. Um, and at the end, the last question on every vignette is, you know, how could alter help? Right. So what could the parent have done differently? How could alter help? So we're trying to get them to practice, practice, practice the applying of Alter. Um, there's a manual on the website. It really goes through all this, I think, hopefully is helpful um, to know how to lead them through uh, to get to where you want to. Um, do lots of summaries as you're going, especially, you know, sometimes you get someone who's a little like a little off the mark or what you want to really talk about. Go back to the comments of the person who was like right on target for what you want to talk to. Yep, yep, that's absolutely true. And you know, I think it's really irrelevant that blah, 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 right? So you are guiding, you are leading. Um, and the manual, I think, provides some tips for how to do that. Okay. Um, the sample vignette and questions, the key points, why is the child doing this? These are some of the key points you wanna to get to in your discussion when you're doing your summary. The child's curious, excitable, and predictable. They want the challenge, doesn't know any better about danger. It's to be expected, um, sort of typical, typical, typical kind of thing. Um, what is the parent thinking? They're thinking, <laughs> they're optimistic. The child's gonna listen. The child knows the rule. Uh, the child is busy and preoccupied. Surely they're not going to go touch that candle in the two seconds I'm gone to go get a glass of water. Um, they'll just be gone a minute um, and the older sibling can keep them safe. So these are some um, things that the parent might genuinely be thinking, right? Um, and what you want to do is to get them to add in some more things, right? When you've been in this situation, what are some things that crossed your mind? Um, you know, that, that kind of idea. So uh, I'm going to show a few vignettes um, and, uh, and show them how I would. So we will, I will stop them. I will ask you to enter some information, uh, answers to questions, um, whether it's in the chat or the Q&A. Uh, I think maybe Q&A, if not chat, wherever. Um, but the idea will be to, to have the experience of what it's like. Okay. So, okay. Give me some here. Maybe what I'll do is uh, I'll show the next two slides um, in case we run out of time and yeah, I don't think we will, but just in case. So, okay. Um, the few questions I'm going to ask you at the end, I'll come back to this, but just in case you can be thinking, if you were to implement Alter, what supports would you need that are not on the website? So how could 
you know, I help kind of thing. Um, and what are the biggest challenges for you in preventing child injuries and falls? And we'll talk about strategies to address these. So, so keep those in mind. Those are the questions I'm going to come back to. Uh, here's my contact information, which will be sent to you. But just so you know, there is a website, alterforchildsafety.ca, that has all of this information and a lot of it in French as well. Not 100% of the videos yet in French, ran out of money, um, but um, a, lot, a lot of the materials, um, the key materials for pre presenting the program are all in French, and then a lot of the videos are as well. So, okay, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to get a video, just one second. And I'm going to start with this one. This one, open, stop. Screen, make the stairs. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. Hold on. And here we go. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see this. Okay. Watch as the mother walks her daughter up the stairs. I won. I won. I won. What is this mother thinking as she walks her child up the stairs? So maybe you can enter some thoughts. What she needs to do when they get upstairs, maybe stay behind in case she slips. Will she fall back? What task am I needing to do next? Exactly. How long is this going to take? Etc. Hurry up. Child is capable. She did this before. She's doing pretty good. Maybe she can do this on her own. So the point is, this is a good video for independence promotion, right? So we're not saying she should you know, carry the child up the stairs. Um, what we're saying is, yep, let's practice. Let the child practice. Let's see how well they do. But let's just be ready with our location relative to the child, right? My activity, my location is to keep the child safe in case they were to slip and were to fall. Okay. So that's sort of the kind of where are we going with our conversation, right? We're going to that. Why might the mother want the child to walk up the stairs on her own? She wants to promote independence. She wants the child to practice. Um, this, is, this is readiness, age appropriate, right? So she's thinking this is what a good mother should do. I should get her ready to be independent, right? So we're, we're asking, we're promoting the independence, but we're still keeping the child safe. Right? It's often difficult to balance promoting independence with keeping children safe. How is this mother using Alter to keep her child safe as the child learns to walk up the stairs? Right, so she's using proximity, location, right, and activity, right? She's ready in case the child slips. Okay. okay. Let me show one or two more so we can get the feel for it. Get rid of that one. And then I will open it up for questions. Okay, this is a different one. This is okay. Stop a minute. Okay. Okay. Girls, cake time. Cake's ready. Who wants a pee? Me. Hang on, someone's at the door. Okay. Why did the mother push the plate out of the children's reach? She's trying to keep them safe. Right? That's why she did it. She's assuming if she pushes it out of the way, the children will leave it alone. Right? She's assuming things. She's, she's expecting things. Maybe she's even thinking there's an older child who knows to listen. 
and follow the rules a little bit better. They'll be a good example for the younger child, right? So you want to engage the, the group. What are they thinking? What is the mom thinking? Why did she do this? Don't touch anything. <laughs> okay, she even said, don't touch anything. Really optimistic. Why is this child ignoring the mother's request not to touch anything? Because she's enticed by the cake. She's a typical child. It's really hard not to touch while she's waiting for mom and wanting the cake, right? So this is like age appropriate, um, not safe, but to be expected. Okay. Why is this little girl doing this? Obviously, she's imitating the older sibling. Um, now, it might be, though, that maybe the older sibling could do things um, that are safe that would actually be challenging for the younger child, right? So it's not just like imitation, it's imitation, and some things can actually pose much greater risk for the younger child than the older child if they try and imitate. What could the mother have done differently and how, how could alter help? All right, so she might have moved the, had the activity, moved the cake to a different location. She might have asked the girls to come with her to answer the door. Um, so the location, there's alter, she could not answer the door, right? Unless she was expecting something, she could have just said, oh, well, they'll come back later. Um, or she could have yelled maybe like, come back later. I can't come right now. Um, so there's, there's other things she could have possibly done. Okay, and there's one, one more I'll show quickly, and then, oops, not that one, I'll call this one, get rid of that one, lots of, <laughs> lots of button presses here, Hold on. okay, there's one more to show, okay. <laughs> it's now that I'm almost finished. Okay. Okay. This also is with a sibling. Hey guys, mommy's just gonna finish folding up the laundry and then I'm gonna go That's downstairs just for a minute, okay? Okay, mommy. This mother has left the room momentarily, but there is an older child with a younger child. Can the older child keep the younger child safe? Why or why not? And we want a really fulsome discussion, right? So we there will be parents who say, sure, you know, she said that, sure, mommy, you know, so she, clearly she knows the rule um, of how to behave, right? But then there'll be other parents who say, no, my child would never be able to, you know, not, not keep their younger sibling safe or whatever, right? So you want the pros and the cons of, you know, thinking it through. Okay, what is the child thinking as she's jumping on the bed? She's having a great time. She's not expecting anything to happen. She's not thinking about danger and safety. She's thinking about how high can I jump? Um, is my brother going to come join me? Um, I want to share this with him. So it's all focused on the joy, right? As, as it often is with young children. And what is the younger child thinking as he's watching her? Well, she's laughing and smiling. So he's thinking this looks like fun. Um, there's no evidence that it's unsafe based on what she's doing. She's laughing and smiling. Uh, she's inviting him to come. So he's thinking, okay, this must be for me to do too. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to go give it a try. What could the mother have done differently and how could alter help? All right, so then we talk about A-L-T-E-R. Timing differences, location differences, activity differences. Okay. So let me just go back to that, which I will put up. Um, so that's the end of my formal presentation. I'm happy to entertain questions. Um, 
And these are a few particular things that I think would be helpful going forward if you wanted to share um, your thoughts. Thanks, Barb. And yeah, I'll just uh, confirm that please do share uh, your thoughts on these questions um, in, in the chat. We'd uh, really appreciate it. It, it helps Barb um, inform the ALTER program, but it also helps um, those sh kind of shaping child safety programming and, um, and policy and advocacy across uh, Canada. There's a national advisory committee that focuses on childhood fall prevention um, and at times childhood safety. So um, answers to these questions will also inform that work as well. So if you have any thoughts on these questions, please, please do share. Another reminder for folks that if you have questions specifically for Barb, I know some people have put it in the the Q&A box, um, but if you have questions for Barb, uh, please don't use the chat, um, put them in the Q&A box. And so the Q&A box is at the bottom of the, of the Zoom window, you'll see it there. Um, if you put it in the Q&A box, we can ensure that it, it gets answered. Otherwise it can get uh, lost in the chat. So um, please ensure that you're putting any specific questions for Barb um, in the Q&A box. Okay, so maybe Michelle, I'll answer a few as people type. Is that okay? Yep, that sounds great. Did you want me to read them out to you or are you? Um, um, I'll read them out loud just because uh, participants sure. can't see them. Okay. All right, so first question, uh, they just say, I may have missed this, but has ALTER been provided to Indigenous parents and parents who are newcomers to Canada? If so, were there any needed uh, adaptions Need, were there any adaptations needed? Um, so we have not yet um, provided it to Indigenous parents. Um, we had hoped to do that, but then COVID hit and things fell through. Um, I would love to work on that with somebody if there, if any of you are interested and in, in have op the uh, op opportunity for me to do that. I would certainly be very interested in doing that. Um, we have tried it with parents uh, who are newcomers to Canada. Um, some of the public health agencies I've worked with have tried that. Um, usually uh, it's, it's the language that has to sort of be um, adjusted. Um, the other good thing about video is a lot of it is self-evident on the video, right? And then you can, you can talk about things like that. So I think that's, that's helped um, to make it at least um, open to some newer uh, immigrants to Canada as well. Um, one of the things we've struggled with is um, funding for translation. Um, and I'm still working on that. <laughs> uh, but again, if anyone has ideas, I'm, I'm open to hearing them because I would love to be able, all of the materials are easily translatable. Um, and so, and I have video um, editing equipment that enables us to do this. So for example, we're creating Spanish versions of things um, in consultation with people I'm working with in the US who want to deliver the program to um, uh, Hispanic families. Um, so yeah, we. I'm open to hearing from you if you have ideas or can assist me. Great, thank you. So the next question is, does ALTER discuss or provide guidance around when other siblings or children can be used as a strategy and how slash when is, uh, how slash when this would be effective or not? Um, it doesn't provide specific guidance in how to use siblings um, as, um, I don't know, uh, not, you know, overseers, caregivers of, of safety, so to speak. Um, it does, I think, raise awareness um, of that one should not assume an older sibling is capable and competent just because they are an older sibling. Um, and I think that's where we get back to the, we're not an expert on your children, you have to know your children, right? So I mean, to be honest, there are 13 year olds I would never leave a child, you know, with. Um, and there are 10 year olds who are incredibly um, conscientious and, and, you know, much more capable than a 13 year old. Um, I think, you know, 
there's a reason why if you look at the age uh, of requirement for when a child can be left alone, for example, there's a reason why it varies so much. I mean, there are states in, this, in the U.S. where it's like eight years of age and other states where it's 15. Um, so clearly we don't have a very good handle on what are the requirements that make a child competent enough and capable enough of keeping themselves safe um, in a home environment alone, let alone keeping themselves and a sibling safe. Um, so no, we don't speak to that issue other than to raise it with parents that we want them to think it through, not just make assumptions. Great, thank you. All right, another question, a uh, good question. <laughs> How do you address min misinformation in the group setting? Um, all information is useful information. So that's the first thing, right? So like, we, you know, so we would try and, um, you know, maybe, uh, so, so this comes up a lot, for example, around some of the videos we have, for example, jumping on the bed raised as a safety, you know, potential safety issue or jumping on the couch we have, right? So other, some parents would say, but I grew up jumping on the bed and jumping on the couch. It was great fun. I wouldn't want my children not to do that. It's like, okay, well, um, maybe there's modifications that could be made though. Um, that would make it safer, right? So if you have a value that jumping on the bed is something you want your child to experience, um, then how can we make it safer? Can we move the nightstands away? Can we put pillows on the floor? Can we have rules about where on the bed they jump? Um, can we have a rule that says only one person on the bed at a time, right? So, so we're trying or working around um, things that are important to them. In terms of downright misinformation, like that's absolutely wrong. <laughs> um, you just tread lightly, but you need to correct it, right? Like, so I might go to something like, do you know, so many parents tell me that. I understand why you would assume that, you know, skins burn the same, no matter if you're 80 or eight or 18 months, but surprisingly, that's actually not true. We have figured that out now. Pretty amazing. Isn't that shocking? Um, but yeah, younger kids, their skin burns way more faster than older kids and, and adults and older people. So yeah, we all learned something here today, didn't we? Right. So I might go something like that, where I'm basically, you know, normalizing it, uh, putting it in a context of um, make sense, you would think that. Um, and, you know, here's what I've heard recently, like, that's pretty incredible. Like, wow, we've all learned something today. So, all right, the next question is, recognizing that caregivers cannot watch children 100% of the time, can you provide an example of how you would use ALTER when uh, a parent was unable to supervise uh, the child? Right, so, um, Often what I would try and do is um, to try and raise awareness then of other things. So one of the things is that, you know, how many times I have told my own children, you know, I'll be back in a minute, <laughs> 10 minutes later, I'm still where I was, right? So, you know, raising awareness that we tend to not be very good at estimating time. Um, and maybe we want to really think carefully about how long we're going to leave the child unsupervised. And for that child in that situation, what might be reasonable or what might be pushing it, right? In terms of like that little feeling of, eh, I don't know if they can do that, keep themselves, you know, safe for 10 minutes in this room. Um, so that's one thing I would try and go to, like time, making them more aware of time and how long things take um, and how long children can really be um, alone by themselves. Um, the other thing I try and make them aware of, uh, you know, assumptions that come into play that might not be um, actually valid. You know, so the idea that they know the rule and they're not going to do this, it's like, yeah, but, you know, after 10 minutes alone, there's no, is it possible? They might think I want to do something different and I'm going to get the, you know, the scissor and the paper and the crayon and make something like a card for my mom, right? Like, so can we try and anticipate, um, you know, even what's reasonable in the situation? Always, 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 I ask them to, you know, be a nice spy detective, a safety detective in the room before you leave. So, you know, have to go, I'm gonna leave my child alone in the room, I'm gonna set it for five minutes on my phone so I really don't lose track of how long I'm really gone. I mean, who doesn't have a phone these days? You can set a timer, um, even if it's just a check-in, right? Let me check in in five minutes. 
Um, if it's a boy, maybe check it in three minutes, right? So like use your timer on your phone um, to keep track of how long you've really been um, and really be a safety detective. What are, what are things that are possible that could go really wrong in this room? Um, and maybe I can make adjustments for them or, um, you know, I had one parent who uh, used bells. <laughs> she had a, a really old TV stand with a big TV on it. And, you know, this is what she could manage. And this was her, her living room. Um, and she couldn't attach anything to the walls. It wasn't going to work for, for the equipment she had. And But what she came up with, to her credit and her creativity, she came up with putting bells in front of the TV stand, right, or on the TV stand. So as the child, you know, approached the TV stand, bells would start ringing and she would come running and, you know, it worked, right? Like it was, it was not, you know, on the safety list, <laughs> you know, with bells, but she found a way to at least buy herself time to get back to the child fast enough to prevent an injury. Right. So that's what we're trying to do. We're really trying to work with them um, and be creative and encourage them to be creative. That's a great example. Thanks, Barb. All right. The next question is, who are the facilitators for Altar? How do you find slash engage them? It could be you. <laughs> um, there was no we, when we created Altar, it had to be a manual um, pick it up and, and run with it kind of program. Um, I didn't want anyone that had to have like a PhD, who had to have a degree in child development. Um, you had to have, you know, the capacity to read, <laughs> um, you know, the, the self-confidence to be able to fully engage with the material and the parents, knowing that, you know, things are going to go hot, haywire a few times um, before you really are able to figure out how to lead them to where you want them to be in the discussion, et cetera. But um, everything you need to facilitate ALTER is online, um, including some videos that I made about um, delivering the program. Great, thank you. I just see someone asking about the website, so I'm just going to drop it in the chat. Yeah, alterforchildsafety.ca. Alrighty, so next question is, um, I'm interested in how health equity has uh, been applied to this strategy. Um, so I would say that's where we're working currently. Um, I mean, we have built, um, created videos that, you know, show diversity, different economic situations. These were not, um, these are videos we made. We purposely recruited families from the communities. If you look at the videos, they're not like, um, you know, high-end kitchens and all of that, and, you know, big, you know, modern TVs on the wall. That's not what we wanted. We wanted your run-of-the-mill average family um, with a range of economic, um, you know, offerings, um, diversity represented. Uh, right now, the work I'm doing on Alter is with collaborators in the U.S. Um, we're working to deliver the program um, to Head Start families, which are particularly economically challenged families. Um, we've done a lot of modifications of the program to try and um, meet those needs, really making some new videos, um, showing more African-American content. Um, we added uh, guns as a, a scenario for injury, um, which is much more common in the US than here in Canada. Hopefully that persists. Um, we, um, and now we're doing the whole Hispanic Spanish version, um, that will be posted on the website once it's finished. So that's how, that's what we're trying to do. Um, I will say that the hardest part has been to try and get funding for that kind of application where, you know, can we, um, translate materials into different, you know, um, different languages based on the immigrants coming to Canada. And, and I have not yet been successful to do that. Thanks, uh, Barb. That's that's helpful information. The next question is: What is the length of time commitment per parent slash caregiver group? Um, it really varies. So the original program we delivered, I think, was eight weeks because we wanted to cover um, each of the injury content areas. I think there's five content areas, um, and the first um, first week we just did the the big video, the 20 minute video and talked about, you know, readiness for change. And then we introduced Alter. And then the next five weeks, we covered different injury areas. Um, so that's six weeks altogether. And then the seventh and eighth week, we did, you know, revisit how are things going? Uh, how do we problem solve, you know, with, with, the, with the users? But 
Um, it doesn't have to be that. It could be whatever you need it to be. I do think that um, a minimum would be, you know, three, maybe three sessions. So the first session being presenting the longer video, really talking through injury, getting to appreciate um, you get them, they understand what you're trying to do, meeting them where they are, uh, but still helping, giving them some tools um, to do just a little more than they're doing. Um, and then the second week covering a particular type of injury that they are interested in um, is very useful, starting where their interest is and then going to something you're interested in. So I know we're all interested in falls, um, but we might start with something that they're really worried about. Um, as a first injury, then they practice the altar, they really get it, and then we extrapolate to the injury topics we really want to go to. And then maybe a third session where uh, we're doing a revisit, a wrap up, or how's it going, let's problem solve, you know, what's working, what isn't, that kind of thing. So it's really up to you how you want to use it. Um, we've used, uh, we've done some online training as well. Um, I haven't yet written that up for publications, but We've done like webinars online um, and parents really like that because they can come and go, you know, we, we video record things, they can come and go whatever time <laughs> they're up, um, you know, that kind of idea. Um, we've been trying to get them to even do, introduce some of this in uh, prenatal classes to just really, you know, prime parents for being ready um, and for thinking about things a little differently before they get too, you know, solidified into like, I can keep my baby safe and they're never going to get injured, um, et cetera. So yeah, the time commitment is really up to you. I will say you can do it individually or as a group. So some of the public health agencies, they've been doing home visits around high risk um, and they've been doing individual and that's fine. We've we've shown that works um and we've also done group and shown that works so it's sort of up to you great thanks barb so we do have a couple of other questions and uh rest assured we will answer them and we're going to have them on the recording but in case folks do have a hard stop um i'm just going to kind of give my couple of words of, of thanks and closure and then uh barb and i will go through the rest of the questions there but Thank you everyone for, for being here today. And thank you so much, Barb. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, loved the, the vignettes and being able to talk through those um, and keep those questions that are on the screen in mind, folks. I'll share those with the, the post event email. And if you have answers to them, we'd love to hear from you. Um, when the webinar does end, you will be redirected to Zoom to fill out an evaluation survey uh, for the webinar. So we'd love to hear from you in that regard as well. It will allow us to continue to improve uh, Loop Junior um, webinars in the future. But thank you again, Barb. Um, and uh, let's shift gears back to our, our questions. Um, but thanks for those who would be online. If you're not able to, to stick with us, uh, the answers to the remaining questions will be part of the recording. So thank you. Thank you very much for attending. And don't hesitate to reach out to me if any of you have questions or challenges or, you know, just want to chat. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. All righty. So next question is, there is a push for encouraging risky play. How do you encourage risk, risky play while still following alter? So, you know, risky play falls in the domain of independence almost, right? Like, so we can, um, we can encourage independence and still use alter, um, like we showed on the stairs, going up the stairs, right? So risky play might involve, you know, the child um, wanting to come down the slide by themselves. That's fine. Okay. But you know, until we really practice our balance and everything, I'm just going to be along the side, right? Just in case, right? So it's really um, tracking that balance of, um, you know, encouraging them in steps and gradation, right? So maybe um, they're not coming down the slide by themselves the first time because they don't realize how fast this is, right? So maybe initially you're going down with them and then initially you're going down sort of holding them slowly, right? And then they're coming down more on their own halfway and then you can sort of stop them. So they get a feel for, you know, maintaining their balance, right? So there's gradations of things that um, you can do as you're backing away, their skills are improving so that you're sure they're ready for what it is they wanna try, right? So um, we, in our manual, talk about not wanting kids raised in a bubble. And that is a real thing, right? With the obesity epidemic, et cetera, we want active kids, we want them to be interested in what they're doing in their playtime, risky play, however we want to call it, challenging play. Um, all of that 
does not mean we can't keep our children safe, right? It's just a matter of gauging their readiness. It's like when we teach them to cross the street, we don't just say, okay, <laughs> let's practice and see how you do, right? Of course not. We walk with them, we hold hands, we pay attention, we talk about traffic. Then, you know, we ask them how to look, right? We might make them stand on the curb and tell us when they think they would go. And then we, like, so we're always judging and estimating, do they have it? Are they ready? Right. And that's the same thing. Walter helps you do that just, you know, slowly in steps. Great. Thank you. Um, the next question, I'm, it might be missing a punctuation. I'm not sure I quite understand what they're, what they mean, but we'll give it a go. Um, there are cases where purchasing a safety device, for example, fire alarms, um, has this been addressed? So I'm wondering if they're talking about um, where the solution might involve uh, purchasing a safety device. Right. So that would be under E, right, for environment modification. Um, and that would certainly be something we, you know, would advocate for, especially if it's the law, right, depending where you're living. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we would start with advocating for something that is, you know, in co consistent with the laws um, that might be an environmental modification and then go to other things as well. Great. All right, next question um, is wondering how uh, how we select parents. Uh, is it self-selection? Yeah, so I think self-selection works the best um, unless you can, you know, target a group that you think they need this information, um, but they may not even realize they do, <laughs> right? So sometimes recent immigrants um, don't appreciate that safety is a really a different thing in our culture than it may be the, you know, where they were from, right? That kind of idea. Um, or maybe, you know, they come from a culture where, you know, it really did, it really was raising, you know, their child by a village, right? And so now they come here and they're like just by themselves. They don't have a lot of, you know, support, a lot of extended family. They have to start doing things themselves 24 seven to keep their child safe risk before they were able to share that um, with more extended family and support. So whatever the situation, um, I think um, there, there's definitely a place for alter, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, another question, can we use Alter content on our own website and as well as create resources to support the program? It's a good question. Um, so right now, um, I mean, technically the Alter material is copyrighted um, just because I don't want people modifying it. And then it's not really the Alter program anymore. Um, so my request is if people need things um, or want to think about modifying things that that comes to me as a discussion. Um, the reason being that I have to be very careful as an evidence-based program that this not start getting diluted or changed or modified in ways that it is not really the evidence anymore that supported this program. Um, and so I'm open to if there's things that need to occur in terms of resources to support the program, you know, talk to me. I would love to hear about that. Um, I'm not going to stop anyone who has, you know, a way they can use it that would be particularly helpful for their community. Um, but I would like to be made aware of that and maybe be involved in that. So even on my own website, the Alta website, I might be able to see for additional resources, check out this website, right? So we can we can make things more complementary and compatible, um, and get, get more for the program out there. Awesome, great answer. All right, uh, next question, we've got two left. Um, the next one is, they noticed that the Watchful Parent Safe Children Canadian version um, is only three minutes, 51 seconds um, long, whereas the US version is almost 20 minutes long. And wondering if a longer version of this video exists, if you're familiar with the Watchful Parent Safe Children. It does, it's supposed to be about 20 minutes. So I'll, that's just a technical, <laughs> technical. <laughs> problem then which I will uh, check with my website developer about what happened there. Perfect. Thanks for flagging that to our Yes, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> and the last question, do you discuss physical literacy to support injury prevention as part of the ALTA program? Um, what do you think is meant by physical literacy? Um, I think it's a growing concept in the, the children's injury field, um, but it, I mean, I mean, similar to the concept of health literacy, mm -hmm. of just awareness of the body and movement and, right. and that sort of thing. 
Right. Um, so from my point of view, that comes into play by um, by the gradations of independence, so, so to speak, or support, right? Um, so that child walking up the stairs, for example, right? That child, as they practice, they were really learning physical literacy in the sense of they're learning about their balance. Um, do they hold something? Do they not? Uh, don't carry something like they are learning a lot through the activity of doing something and the parent uh, similarly is judging and estimating the child's physical capabilities um, mm -hmm. by seeing them act right and I think the same goes for being on a playground in particular I think um, and so we don't address it directly um, but we address it through um, I think where we discuss independence the idea of gradation of independence, not just like, okay, let's see if you can do this. Um, that That's where I think physical literacy will come into play, although we don't explicitly discuss that. Right, for sure. All right, well, those are all of our questions. So I'll say a word of thanks again, Barbara. Such a fantastic presentation. Um, it's uh, It's been a pleasure uh, working with you on this and looking forward to see what kind of feedback folks have and, and see um, how folks are implementing it in their in their settings. So uh, thank that you again. Good. And, and thanks to those who are still on the line with us. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. And have a great afternoon. Bye. Bye now.